think the fans know this is it. And he got an ovation. Now, whether that affects how he's going to make his decision, um, he, there's, there's no place for him here, okay? I don't know if there's a place for him in the NFL. I don't know what he's going to decide to do. Um, maybe he will play somewhere next year. Maybe he'll be in Denver. Maybe he'll find a way to stick her in the NFL somewhere. But, you know, he, uh, he's never going to wear a giant uniform again unless for some reason he ends up playing that last game of the season against Philadelphia. But you can't take that chance is that you had that rare moment of the NFL where you get to say goodbye. And think of all the champions from the 07 championship and the 2011 championship, right? Brandon Jacobs never got to say goodbye. Um, Bradshaw never got to say goodbye. He got, you know, he got released yep, and we ends. called up the show and he said goodbye. Yep. You know, Victor Cruz, you know, he's, he's in Chicago trying to make the Bears, right? O.C. Human you know, bounced gone, around, bounced yeah. around. Justin Tuck is it's playing for the Oakland it's, Raiders. It's literally yeah, everybody. They, 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 when you think about the great players from that era of Giants football, pretty much all of them. Michael Strahan retired at the end of the Super Bowl, but he didn't get a chance to say goodbye to the fans after a home game. You know, he won the Super Bowl, the ultimate prize, but his goodbye was like at the parade afterward. But there, there wasn't that walking off the field where the fans can show you the love. Thank you, Michael Strahan. Tiki Barber was just goodbye. One minute he's here, the next minute he's gone. One minute he's here, the next minute, you know, he's, he's in front of a camera. Jason Seahorn, one minute he's here, the next minute he's gone. So... It was fitting. It, it just doesn't happen that way. You don't get those Derek Jeter moments. You don't get the David Wright coming back to play a game and everybody gets to talk about how it's David Wright's goodbye, right? You saw it in your lifetime, too. It, you know, Mario's goodbye in Pittsburgh or, or you Bird. know, Larry Bird in Boston. You know, you get that moment. That happened. Football, that doesn't happen. Football, you get dragged off the field. You get cut. You get released. You get traded to a team a thousand miles away that doesn't care about it's you. It's interesting. It's 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 so typically what I was just looking because I thought, I thought that there was one, but I doubted it. Yeah, even like the the player of my youth as a Redskins fan. You know, Art Monk took his last snap for. It was a Jet, I remember. And then an Eagle. And then, I yeah, mean, no memory of that. This is a guy who was with the Redskins for 13, 14 years, yeah. wins a few Super Bowls, and then, you know, uh, Johnny Unitas playing for the San Diego Chargers. Joe Namath playing for the Los Angeles Rams. Franco Harris playing for the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, that's the Michael worst. Jordan playing in Washington, right? I mean, that, that's, it, it, it's crazy. And sometimes you get the goodbye and sometimes you don't, but in football you rarely ever do. And so he, he got that. So I, I thought that was pretty special. I, I, for a Giant fan, and I don't know how it translates, Peter. You've been here for a while. You got to know him a little bit. And I know Andrew's an Eagle fan, but he got to know him a little bit. That it's, it's special to be able to have that moment. And you can see how emotional he was. He incorporated the fans into it. Here's some of the comments he had after the game. What will he remember about Sunday? I think probably just the fan, you know, the fans and the chants and, and the awkward feeling of standing there on the sideline, kind of a circle around me, everybody looking at me and staring at me and a camera on me and, and, and not feeling real comfortable in that in that circumstance. But just, just uh, you know, walking, you know, kind of getting taken out and, and there in the fourth and just having all the all my teammates come up to me and, and say something, a little hug. So, you know, you appreciate all those guys and, and, uh, and everything they've done to, you know, get this win today. How did it feel to have the kids watching them play? It's special. I think it's special that you know my kids get to come and watch you know watch some games. Uh, I don't remember my, my dad playing at all. He retired. I was four years old. So uh, my brothers have memories that they always kind of talked about it. You know, in the locker room and around the games, and, and and I don't remember it. So I try to bring bring my. Uh, Bring my kids around as much as possible. Bring them to some games. I know I got my youngest son won't won't remember any of it, but uh, you know at least have a picture to, to to show him one day. Picture, video, DVD. It's a lot different than it was when hey, we were growing up. How old is his youngest? Right? The the infant? Yeah, it's, that, it's I don't know, one maybe less than one. Is that the one who was being bopped feverishly in the background <laughs> of, of the booth? <laughs> yeah. There was one child that was being rocked so hard throughout the entire end of the game. But yeah, it, it was neat to see. I mean. We'll see now what happens. How, now, knowing the Giants, we won't get an answer about whether he's playing against the Redskins until, you know, Saturday afternoon. Um, but he could still be playing this weekend. He could be. But, but then it would be all right because it's in Washington. So you still needed to get that goodbye. The question is, will Jones be ready for the last game of the season against the Eagles? So how crazy would it be if he ends up having to start in that game and he does get the one more home game? 
you know, or, or do you just have Tanny start and not even bother because you don't want to ruin that moment? Oh, and with the win, he's back to 500. Yeah, I don't know how much that played into it, but I, I kind of felt better for him. Not that it matters. He's not a pitcher. It's not his record, but it's kind of something that gets thrown out there, and he came so close to beating Philadelphia, right? Maybe things are different if they win the toss instead of lose the toss and give up the touchdown. Uh, he talked about the ovation he got from the fans after the game. Obviously, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what the future is. I don't know what, what you know, lies next week, uh, let alone, you know, you know, down the road. But, um, you know, I think it's just... Uh, Obviously, you know, the support and the, and the fans and their ovation and their, um, you know, chanting my name from the, you know, first snap to the end. I appreciate that and, and uh, you know, appreciate them always and just uh, all my teammates coming up to me. So, um, you know, it's a special, special day, special win and, um, you know, uh, one I'll remember. How about the post-game speech to his team? Hey guys, I appreciate it. This is a special win, man. They're all special. So uh, all of them are tough. Doesn't matter what the feeling is, what the season is going. There's not a better feeling than a win in the locker room on a Sunday, boys. So I appreciate this one. It's special. And uh, let's keep it rolling, all right? I'll see you all Wednesday. Yeah! Man, I'll tell you what, that love they have for Eli Manning. And, and you got to hear about the speech that he gave before the game, mm. which sounded a lot different maybe than the Eli that we're used to hearing from, you know, dropping F-bombs right before they walked out of the locker room. You know, he was in a different place. It's, it's the reason that we love pro football, in my opinion, more than any other of the four major sports. Every game matters. Even to absolutely irrelevant teams playing, they only play 16 times a year. You live and die on that field every week. And every game we watched yesterday, so many teams playing for nothing right now. You can't tell when you watch the games. And, and, and this is just another example. Yesterday's game against the Dolphins was important in spite of the fact that it was completely meaningless. And I, and I think Jones will play. I um, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we were to find out that Jones could have played yesterday. Um, or could have been a little bit more involved had it not been for that moment. You know, Tanny went out and took the last snap, so um, clearly there still is an injury for Jones, but who knows how it'll all play out over the next couple of weeks, but still it was nice. And whether you're a Giant fan or not, you just think of New York sports. You know, it, since this station started in 2001, for baseball it was Derek Jeter and Mariano Rivera with the Yankees, and they got their goodbyes, and that was emotional, and they were a big part of the landscape of New York sports. I guess you could say in, in this era, was it Carmelo Anthony with the Knicks, although maybe it didn't have the same impact because there wasn't a lot of winning when Carmelo was here. You know, um, with the Rangers, Henrik Lundqvist has been amazing and still has a little bit left, so we're not saying goodbye to him just yet. But from a football perspective, a lot of good players have come. We saw Curtis Martin come and Kevin Mawai with the Jets well, and how about certainly this? Darrell Rivas with the Jets. But this guy... For 16 years, two Super Bowl championships, as you said, a good guy, an easy guy to root for. It's, it, it's tough to say goodbye. Well, is there, has there ever been a better quarterback in New York? I mean, Not just the Giants. I mean, we, I think he's the greatest quarterback for the Giants, and then the only Jet would be Joe Namath. But, but uh, career-wise, Eli's better. Yeah, just because Namath's career was cut short and his knee injuries and all that. I mean, no, listen, I think he's the best quarterback in the history of this town. Why? That's, that's Hiddle, pretty Charlie Connerly. I mean, there's a lot of good quarterbacks that have played. Joe Namath, guys that are in the Hall of Fame. But, And I know that to a certain age, there's there's probably listeners out there that are 18, 20 years old who, who the majority of their life has seen an Eli that was compromised on a bad team and struggling to make the playoffs and... And, and there's been a lot of bad, certainly, but you take a look. If you've been around long enough to remember all of Eli's career, there's a lot of great football and a lot of great moments. And to be able to win a cup of Super Bowls, the MVPs, the circumstances in which they won those Super Bowls, all right? I know, you, know, you Phil, can't forget you know, that. Phil Simms won an MVP for his Super Bowl performance in Super Bowl twenty one. What was it, four incompletions. It was just an amazing performance and a blowout against the Denver Broncos. But you think of those two Super Bowls against the Patriots, against Bill Belichick, against Tom Brady. To have drives late in the game to beat the perfect Patriots. And then to do it again with him going on the field and Bradshaw trying to stop from falling, you know, into the end zone. And it wasn't all Eli. Listen, Justin Tuck, O.C. Humanora. There was a lot of great players on both sides of the ball for the Giants for those championships. But there's something about a quarterback. It's different. He, he's, he, was, he was the best player probably in those Super Bowls. And so clutch in both of them. And in both of them, you beat this team. You have to remember, this Patriots team that we're currently watching come to a close is the greatest team probably. Let's, we'll get to the cheating stuff later. But from a dominant standpoint, Don, 
the most impressive team ever in pro sports. They beat them twice. Yeah. You just can't do it. Also, Joe Namath, you know, you, you know how I feel about Joe Namath, my favorite guest on the show. I absolutely love him. He, he threw 50, like 50 less uh, touchdowns than interceptions. His completion percentage, 10 points lower than Eli. It's, it's not really but listen, that close. if Namath got to play 16 years, he probably but he would be 12. better. Yeah, but, but a lot. But look at the games played from those 12. But, but, Don, you have it in front of you, right? Yeah, but hold on. But real quick, Eli is a completion percentage of 60. Remember these. Um, and then touchdowns, 366 over 244. Um, remember that percentage I just gave you, because Joe Namath's percentage is, his completion percentage is 50, and his touchdowns to picks is 173 over 220. Right. I mean, he could have played a few more games. It, his numbers just aren't as good. No, no it, it's, but still, I mean, he's, he's would be next up, right? He's next. Him, yeah, but I, you know, Y.A. Tittle probably, but Y.A. Tittle also spent a lot of time in San Francisco before he came to the Giants, so... Listen, the fact that we're comparing him to Y.E. Till and Joe, and Joe Namath, Namath that's, yeah. that's a pretty good company to be in. There's, there's zero question about that. So just I, I, I really thought it was a nice day. You know, and what has been a, just a lousy football season really for both teams, right? Oh,